This Learn Electrics video looks at ZS measurements that we might make on site, the so called 80% rule. For some, including new learners, there can be concern over which figures to use when testing and some confusion over what the different figures actually mean. This is an update to an earlier video on this subject from a few years ago and all references made here are to the Brown Wiring Regulations book BS 7671 2018 Amendment 2 to 2022. What is the 80% rule? It's a method used to calculate the measured ZS values for different sizes of circuit breakers and fuses. The measured values are those that we will measure on site with our test meters. So, what does it actually mean? Let's start with covering a few basics and clear up any confusion that there may be before we begin. Are we talking about resistance or impedance? And we are only discussing AC circuits here, not DC. Do we understand when a measurement is a resistance and when we should be calling it an impedance? When we do an Ohm's test on a cable, is the circuit dead or live? Is the power turned off or is the power on? When measured on a dead circuit, we call the reading a resistance. If we measure a live AC circuit, it is called an impedance. And some examples are shown here. R1 plus R2 is a resistance because it is measured on a dead circuit. ZE will always be an impedance. For most of us, we will not have the opportunity to turn off the whole of the town whilst we carry out our tests, so it will be tested live. ZS is a mixture of ZE and R1 plus R2, and because ZE will be a live circuit, it means that ZS will also be a live test and called an impedance. The next question is, are we talking about tabulated values or measured values, and what is the difference? We will look at these next, and you must understand the difference. Choose the wrong data when testing circuits, and everything is thrown into doubt. And you may even leave the installation in an unsafe condition. ZS tabulated, and I stress the word tabulated, comes from the tables in the Wiring Greg's book. But we do not use these figures as a direct comparison when testing. Something else must happen. ZSM, or ZS measured, is found in the on-site guide, and these are the figures that have been adjusted for use when testing on-site. There are three steps to finding the measured value for ZS. We start with finding the basic, or raw data, for a particular size of fuse or circuit breaker. We can then find this in Appendix 3, beginning with page 409 in the Regulations Book. Put simply, these are the response curves that the fuse manufacturer must work to, and this gives us a starting point for ZS. The second step will take the raw data and make an allowance for voltage fluctuations in the supply. We do this by multiplying the raw data, or basic data, by 0 0.95 to give us a smaller value of ZS. This is the data that we find in the tables in part 4 of the book. This is the tabulated ZS. And the third step is to make an allowance for temperature changes in the conductors. This is the 80% rule, and this calculation reveals the measured ZS values as found in the on-site guide. We can now go to our starting point, the tables in Appendix 3, and find the basic or raw data that we need. This table is found on page 417 of the Wiring Regulations book, the Brown book, and is specifically for Type B circuit breakers and RCBOs. Manufacturers will make their Type B devices trip to this table. The table on the top right gives us the data that we need. 
it shows that a 32 amp device should operate in 0 0.1 seconds with 160 amps of fault current. Whether our required disconnection time is 0 0.4 seconds or 5 seconds, this device will disconnect the circuit in the required time if the required fault current flows. This is the basic data that we need in order to make the rest of the calculations. Using simple Ohm's law, we have 230 volts divided by 160 amps to give us a starting point for ZS of 1.44 ohms. And if we didn't have to worry about voltage fluctuations or temperature changes, then this would do. But we must make allowances for them, so we now need to do something more with this 1.44 ohms. This is the data for a Type B 32 amp device. Other devices will have a different ohms value. Now for tabulated ZS, as found in Part 4 of the BS7671 wiring regulations book. This is Stage 2 of the process. Staying with our 32 amp Type B circuit breaker, we are now on page 68 of the Wiling Regs book. This is table 41.3 and covers both 0 0.4 second disconnection times for final circuits and 5 second disconnection times for distribution circuits. Why is the table showing 1.37 ohms when the basic data just gave us 1.44 ohms? The blue arrow at the bottom is showing us the C min factor that was used. 1.44 multiplied by 0 0.95 is 1.37 ohms, and this is known as the tabulated value. So how does C min work? On page 410 of the Brown Wiring Regs book is a formula that makes reference to C min, and below that is a definition of C min and instructions to use a factor of 0 0.95. C min makes allowance for voltage fluctuations. In this case, we are interested in voltage reductions. Ohm's law shows us that a reduction in voltage will result in a reduced current. If the supply voltage reduces to its allowable minimum, we may not achieve 160 amps of fault current in some circuits, and the breaker may not operate in the required disconnection time. So we make the resistance smaller, so that more fault current will flow and restore the balance. Now we can go to step 3 and apply the rules for finding the measured ZS or ZSM. Shown here is the maximum measured ZS called ZSM for a circuit breaker as measured with a test meter. This is the maximum reading that we should expect to measure when on site and testing a circuit if the circuit is protected by a Type B 32 amp circuit breaker or RCBO. And the maximum ZS has reduced further from 1.37 ohms to 1.1 ohms. Why? This is because we have now applied the 80% rule. In the formula, we have done everything shown in stages except multiply by 0 0.8, which we have now done. 1.37 multiplied by 0 0.8 is 1.1 ohms. So ZS measured is 1.1 ohms, as shown on the previous slide. Looking at the formula, U0 multiplied by C min and divided by IA gave us the tabulated value of ZS, as in the wiring regs book. And then multiplying by 0 0.8 gives us ZS measured, as shown in the on-site guide. Each circuit breaker, RCBO and fuse type will have a different ZS measured value and these are shown in the on-site guide in Appendix B starting on page 139. Learn to use this appendix, especially the data on page 145. You will use the information a lot in your career. That leads us to the question of why we do this. Why should we make these adjustments for temperature changes? The ZS values in the regs book are calculated at temperatures of 10 degrees Celsius. But we all know that many installations will be subjected to ambient temperatures above this, 
say 20 degrees. And also, as current flows through a cable, heat will be generated in the conductors. As a conductor temperature increases, the resistance of the conductor will also increase by a small amount per degree. If we know the end point, if we know what the maximum ZS should be for a device according to the wiring regs, can we work backwards to find a smaller resistance for a starting point that will guarantee that we do not exceed the numbers shown in the regs book as the temperature and resistance increases? For the 32 amp breaker that we have just used, we must answer the question. What does ZS have to be at 10 degrees Celsius to not exceed 1.37 ohms at 70 degrees Celsius? This table shows the increase in ZS for changes in the copper conductor temperature for the 32 amp device. This is for illustration purposes only. When testing and completing certificates, we should always use the 10 degree temperature the ZS measured as shown in the on-site guide. As our skills increase, we can make adjustments to ZSM where the numbers are close to the maximum limit and how to do this will be the subject of another video from Learn Electrics. Let's begin by constructing a simple graph with the ZS measured numbers going vertically from bottom to top and the temperature in degrees Celsius along the bottom. If we now show the resistance increases against the temperature changes, we can see what is happening. As the conductor temperature increases, the conductor resistance will increase. And we must avoid letting the measured ZS value exceed the maximum permitted ohms for this device. And this is a similar graph, constructed for a 10 amp Type B breaker. All conductors will show a similar increase, but with different numbers. The circuit breaker, or fuse type, and the rating, and the required disconnection time will determine the maximum ZS for that particular circuit. The 80% rule is one way of looking at ZS measured, or ZSM. It is the 80% value of the figure given in BS7671 wiring regulations. The wiring regulations show tables of ZS figures, hence ZS tabulated. The values shown in the on-site guide, or OSG, are 80% figures and are called ZS measured. It is the ZS measured values that we measure with our test meters. A particular size and type of circuit breaker will have a tabulated value shown in the wiring regulations. Multiply this number by 0 0.8 or 80% to arrive at ZS measured. So, this is what we've done. The fuse or breaker type, plus the fuse or breaker rating, plus the disconnection time and making an allowance for voltage changes will determine the tabulated ZS for a particular device. If we then multiply by 80%, for temperature variations, we arrive at a number for ZS measured. Be aware that changing the cable size or CSA will not change the ZS values in the wiring regulations. They are determined by the fuse or breaker. But cable size will affect how quickly a cable heats up compared to other sizes of conductor. So it pays to always install the correct size cable for the circuit being worked on. And finally, when we test, if we can show that the ZS measured is less than the 80% figure shown in the on-site guide, we can be confident that, if the conductor temperature increases, the ZS will not exceed the values shown in the wiring regulations at the limiting temperature of 70 degrees Celsius. And that's all that we want to do. We hope you've enjoyed the video and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. And we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, 
into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.